And this is a Carpet Cleaning World Revolution exclusive. Now, in about 24 hours or less, we're going to enjoy the 2019 year Thanksgiving meal. Hopefully all of you are well and will be with family and loved ones. Ladies and gentlemen, 2020 is approaching us and it's approaching us quickly, quickly. Now, yesterday I did an interview with Mikey P and you guys know that he's doing his Mikey's Fest in February 28th and 29th. We're doing the CCW conference in Las Vegas in Green Valley. The information's up there. January 16th and 17th. Ladies and gentlemen, I have talked to a lot of you and there's a lot of cleaners and new cleaners joining these groups in the industry every day. And my Facebook channel, welcome. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I just got in from work and I wanted to let you know what it takes to be financially successful as a one or multi-truck operation. Now, I'm not saying that you can't be successful. I'm not saying that you can't do it. So please, before you post or before you comment rather and chime in, listen to this or don't and don't comment at all. But this is very important. I know a lot of the other guys have been saying that, you know, us old school boomers don't know what we're talking about and we're this and we're that. And nobody reads um, written literature anymore and things like that. You couldn't be more wrong. But let me tell you something. Let's get right to it. Most of you are one truck operators and you run a one truck operation, but you don't. You're a one truck operator, but you want to run a financially successful one truck operation. Now, is everything Roger Lloyd says arched in stone and in gold? No, but is it a method and strategy that has been proven and that it works for financially successful one truck operations? See, I want you to understand, you can be a successful operator, but if you're stressed out, if you're trying to answer the phones, if you're doing all the work, you're trying to do the marketing, listen, let me tell you something. No man or woman are their own island. So if you would give me a few minutes before my holiday starts as well, I would like to at least clear some things up. Most carpet cleaner owner operators never reach the potential or the heights that they could. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because they stop at being an operator. Listen, to run an operation financially successful, you need two other key personnel. You need someone to answer your phones. Two, you need a helper. You do. There's, okay, you know what? You guys can listen to this or you can disagree, but I'm telling you it's proven fact. You want to have a helper. Not a technician, but a helper. Someone that's going to assist you. Someone that knows when you get to a job site that they're doing most of the physical labor. See, they have a job to play, just like a football field. They have a, a position to play. And they don't question you. They don't ask you, what are you doing and why aren't you helping them? Yes, you want to help them get set up. Yes, you want to make sure everything's flowing normally. All the, the uh, wall huggers are up, the um, seal the door, the um, hook hangers on the staircases. The walking mats are, are down. You want to make sure everything is set up. And then you know what? You go to another place or go out to your truck and you do what? 
you do what an owner operator does. You make sure you stay in constant communication with the office or the person that's taking your phone calls. And every now and again, you run back in and you check on your helper and make sure that he's doing everything smoothly, smoothly, and the operation is moving on. But you do not clean the carpet when you're on, when you're an when you have a one truck operation. You do when you're a one truck operator, but when you're an operation, you have a helper that does it, and you just oversee. See, a lot of us carpet cleaners. When we're owner operators, we lose sight of the ball. And you think that if you hire someone, you have to be a multi-truck operation. No, no, ladies and gentlemen, it's still business. You have to understand that you have to play your position. Yes, you're the quarterback and you're throwing out the passes, but it has to be someone even in a one-truck operation that's catching the pass and running for the daylight or the touchdown zone. You need someone that is trained the way you train them to answer your phones. In my perf in my perf um, opinion, I wouldn't hire an answering service. They're not personal enough for me. I'd rather hire someone or someone like Janae Raleigh, who runs RLMA, who answers the phone for my industry so she can understand what wicking is. She can explain how we would get out of red spot and things like that. Yes. Now, the next thing, when you're a one truck operation, your helper has to be someone that is detailed, he's intelligent, and he can follow orders, but most of all, he can work on his own. Yes, he can work on his own. He doesn't need to be bugging you every few minutes about what you're doing or what's going on or trying to help you out. He has a position to play, and once you throw that pass, he's supposed to catch it and run for daylight. He's supposed to clean those carpets, clean that tile and grout, clean the wood floors. When Jordan and I go to a job site, Jordan knows that he's going to greet the customer and then I slowly will come in to make sure after he looked around and spoke with the customer and knows what's getting done, he brings it back to me. He tells me if they told him he had pet stains or things like that. So automatically, I'm bringing in my moisture meter and my black light. Yes, my moisture meter and my black light. See, when you're a one truck operation, you're going to do things in a manner that is so professional, so close to the fence that they feel like they deserve to pay you more. You deserve to get paid more. You understand that? So then once you fill everything out, I know it's so old school to, you know, jot notes down and what needs to be done because we have a devastator wand, right? We have a Tony Dang wand, right? So we're just going to go in and we're going to blast it through and we're out and we're at, off to the next one. Yeah, Roger, that's how it works for me. No, it doesn't. It does. Yes, you're making some money, no doubt about that. But are you financially successful? Are you growing customer cheerleaders and referral sources? Are you? Every time you go in someone's house. You see, you should. See, when you're watching, you know, Johnny Johnson and things like that, and you guys are saying, oh, you know, Johnny Johnson, oh, I can't be making this up. Um, guys, do you see what I'm doing? Do you see what I'm doing? First of all, you have to understand, Johnny Johnson runs a multi-truck operation. And see, when you run a multi-truck operation, you should, in my opinion, have some price points because Johnny's main job as he tries to explain to you is he's trying to keep both of his trucks moving all the time. 
So you can't down him. You can't say his methodology doesn't work. It works very well. And I recommend that to all the multi-truck operators. I can't say $30, but $30, $35, up to $40 per room is what you should charge. You're still one step lower than the corporations like Stanley Steamer, so they should be putting a little bit more effort in it. You guys have Rotovacs and T-Rexes and specialty wands and things like that that your technicians are using. Um, Johnny Johnson has a Devastator wand. So yes, he, in my opinion, he should scratch that 30 off his truck and he should put 40. Why should Johnny Johnson put $40 on his truck instead of 30? He just showed you why. He just spent another, what, $1,000, $1,200 on a wand? He needs to recover that money. He's giving a better service than his competition and the Stanley Steamers of the world. Now, listen, if you're a one truck operator, you got to have the, the, the Tony Dang one, the Devastator, a Rotovac, a T-Rex, and a couple other things that you should have. And I'm trying to explain to you why. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it's very important. Yeah, that's Janae, hey, Janae. <laughs> Um, it's very important that you guys understand that you have to decide what company you want to, what type of carpet cleaning business you want to run. Do you want to run a one truck operation or do you want to run a multi truck operation? But at the end of the day, the goals are the same. How you get there, how you derive there is different. That's why it amuses me all the time when you have these one truck operators watch a Johnny Johnson video and they sit there and pick him apart and make fun of him. First of all, that goes to show me right away, whether you guys call me a boomer or old head or whatever, that shows me right away that you don't know what you're doing and you don't know what you're talking about. So what? You can make the perfect wine strokes. Now I'm gonna hurt your, fit, your feelings. You're not a good business person because you would understand that the way Johnny Johnson is doing it is for a multi-truck operation. He's running two trucks. His job is to keep both of those trucks running. And he does it, and he does it very well. Now, would Johnny Johnson's model and my business model be the same? Of course not. I run a single truck operation. So what does that mean for me? That means where Johnny Johnson is charging 40 or $30 a room and people are calling, 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 calling. He's keeping his trucks moving. No, Johnny Johnson's not going to do nearly the job that I'm going to do. And I'm not nearly going to do the job that Johnny's going to do. But does that mean that he's not cleaning carpet? Does that mean he doesn't deserve to be listened to? Of course he does. Everyone that wants to run a multi-truck operation should listen to Johnny Johnson. People that want to run a financially successful one-truck operation, in my opinion, should give me a good listening to. But Johnny Johnson is telling you that those $30 signs on his truck is keeping his phone ringing. Not that he's making the perfect wand strokes. Not that he's getting shoe booties and moving on and moving on and all the other things he says. Because that's not what his particular clientele is hiring him for. You have to understand Johnny Johnson's methodology. Johnny Johnson is saying, look, I'm going to charge you $30 up to 200, 250 square feet rooms which actually, whose rooms are really bigger than that, but there are some, but the average room is $30. So right away, people look at Johnny's trucks and they say, well, $90, I can get my three carpeted rooms done upstairs. Yes, and that works. He still made $90. Are you listening to me? And he makes it, but then he gets in there, he sells some pet treatment and other things. So he's making his money. 
You cannot knock Johnny for what he's doing. He has a system. Now, for all these guys that are picking on him and picking on me and Antoine and Jason and whoever else that's posted in here, they love to pick on people. They always say they help, they're helping people. But how are you helping them? Right now, so many cleaners, new and old, are going to take the advice that this boomer right here, Roger Lloyd, is giving them, and they're going to tuck it under their arm. And just like them touchdowns on, on tomorrow's football games, they're going to run for daylight. See, that's what I'm saying. If you're going to be negative and you're going to keep pointing out what you don't understand, that shows that you have a serious problem and it's negative. But if you want to be a single truck operation, not operator, that's successful, financially successful. Remember, I'm going to keep putting that word in there, financially successful. Because let me tell you about a single truck operation. When I come in, I don't have to go over the books. I don't have to schedule people. I don't have to read what all I had to take up because I had them jot little notes down in my phone or whatever because I was trying to do three jobs in one. That's already taken care of. I go in and I see that my, um, my jobs are booked. The money's, uh, the money's have been received and everything that needs to be paid has been paid. When I come in, I don't have to clean up my truck. I don't have to clean out filters. My technician knows what his daily routine is when he comes in and when he comes, um, when he goes out at night. And what do I do is the question that you're asking. I oversee everything. See, Michael Gerber teaches us that even if you're a one truck operation or a one time, one person businessman or woman, you, you have to be the entrepreneur, the manager, and the production. So if you want a successful one truck operation, you need to be the entrepreneur, which you are. The manager is like your office person that answers your phones and takes care of everything and books the jobs and whatnot. And your production is the, your helper. Now. Your helper needs to get paid between 15 to 25% of each job. Oh, Roger, you done lost your mind. I would never. Roger, I'm only charging. See, that's the problem. You're only charging. See, when you're a one-truck operation, you can't charge. And I hate to say this because so many of you do. You can't really charge a price. Um, per room. You have to be detailed. Remember, the title of this is if you want to be financially successful. Everything about your one truck operation should be so much more. You have to have packages. You have to charge by the square foot. If you don't want to have packages, you have to have options. I choose packages. I have a fresh, a quick, um, spring fresh quick clean package at 37 cents a square foot. I have a healthy fresh deep clean package at 55 cents a square foot. And then I have the bells and whistles with the CRB, the, the, uh, the uh, pet treatment. You even get one emergency spot visit throughout the year. From that date, you got it clean, valued at $75, where I'll bring my mighty light in and get up a spot or two that might have accident might have happened in between. That is 65 cents a square foot. Now, if you guys are doing the math or whatever, you're saying, Roger, that's crazy. You're charging like 70, uh, what is it, $74 for one, uh, for one room if it's up to 200 square feet. You're right. So, Raj, you're telling me you're charging like $148 for two rooms. You're right. Yep. Because I'm going to tell you why. 
This helper has to be so detailed. This helper has to be able to work by himself. This helper has to really be well-groomed, um, well-mannered. Um, he has to speak well because he's interacting directly while my, with my client while I'm marketing, while I'm dealing with the office person and I'm doing my business. See, everyone plays a position, even in a one truck operation. Now, if you wanna be a one truck operator, like most of you are, that yeah, you might be successful because you're bringing in a couple dollars and then you're hoping the phone rings and you're hoping you can make this kind of money or you're hoping you're getting that many calls, so be it. But if you're a one truck operation, you know that even if you do just two rooms, you're bringing in about 148, well, you're bringing in gross, $148. You got to give your technician between 15 to 25%. It's worth his or her time. Now, if you want to run a multi-truck operation, well, that's different. You put the guys on the clock, you pay them between 10 to $14 an hour, they go out, they do what you guys would consider uh, a little bit more than a splash and dash, and they're in and out of there. And it does work. And Johnny Johnson's system, which is similar to that, will work. And anybody else that wants a three-truck operation, a four-truck operation, you cannot charge your right by the square foot, in my opinion. It's too much work, too much hoping that your technicians are doing what they need to do at a different when they say, okay, well, we have four rooms to do. They're $30 a piece. This is the basic thing that we do. Did they get pet treatment? Did they get this? Are they getting the CRB? Okay, well, not. Let's go and blast it out, get paid, and we're off to the next one. Yes, there are clientele and people. I don't want to hear that, oh, Roger, they're a disgrace in the industry. They're making it so bad. No, they're not. There are people, believe it or not, Mr. Know-it-all, because you had a perfect wand strokes or you vacuum the carpet perfectly. Yes, learn business. Add a little business with all your IICRC classes that you took. Speaking of that, I'm trying to get an IICRC instructor, yes, to teach carpet cleaning, the basics of carpet cleaning at the Carpet Cleaning World Conference to be continued if, he, if he's willing to come out there. Yes, you guys do need some, at least need to know about the IICRC. So therefore, if you want to get a certification, yes, just like if you go to Mikey's Fest, if you come to the Carpet Cleaning World Conference, there should be an instructor there that will be able to certify you so you can feel like you've got your diploma in carpet cleaning. But yes, still, that's only one thing that's going to be at the Carpet Cleaning World Conference. You have to understand the fundamentals of running a carpet cleaning business. You have to pick the model that you want to run. If you want to run a single truck operation, or if you want to run a multi-truck operation, Johnny Johnson, for example, I keep using him as an example. He has his sons working for him. He drives a truck one way, his sons drive a truck another way, and then they meet up home at the end of the day, and he counts all the money and put half of it in the shoebox channel that he has, that he's running for the carpet cleaning world. And he's showing you. So like he's telling you, he can't make this up. He's showing you. Every day you see my tech, my helper and I go into someone's house. He gets $100 tips, $30 tips, $40 tips every day because of my, what? My carpet cleaning model. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, well, Roger, I don't want to just go after high-end homes. So, like, your model wouldn't work for me, and I'm a single truck operator. Oh, my dear friend. Yes, you are an operator, so this would not work. But if you want to grow into a single truck financially successful operation, then it would work. 
because see, let me tell you something. I've been in what you would consider, I don't like to call it the hood. I call it the financially challenged areas. And my goodness, when you go in some of these houses, they li they're living what you call ghetto rich. They have the nice wall model TVs. They have nice furniture. Um, they might have a couple dogs that are well maintained. And guess what? They want to keep their carpets and their furnishings neat and up to date. So they will pay. See, quality doesn't come from where you live at. Quality comes from within. My mother taught me that a long time ago, and I didn't understand that. And if I did, I wouldn't have started out this business the way I did. But see, now I understand. That's why I offer three different packages. Maybe you can only afford my spring fresh quick clean package, but guess what? You're getting the shoe booties, you're getting the wall guard, corner guards that hug the walls now, you're getting the um, the uh, seal of door, you're getting the, the mats laid out on the floor. I mean, you're getting the works. We're gonna come in and vacuum the carpet, we're gonna CRB the carpet, after we vacuum it, then we're going to take the pockets off the CRB and put the edges on. So after we pre-spray, we're going to CRB the um the agitate agitate the um pre-spray in the carpet, and then we're going to do the hot water extraction. And then when we're done, we're going to groom the carpet with the CRB. So that carpet, even with our Spring Fresh Quick Clean package at 37 cents a square foot, you got everything you need that you know that you got the best in the carpet cleaning industry that it offers. And I can get 37 cents and my helper is happy and he still gets 30 to $100 tips. I don't have to come in and clean up and fix the truck up when I get in. I'm an owner. I own an. Uh, I'm an owner operator operation. A one truck owner operation. When I come in, I just talk to my wife and I look over everything that's done because she answers my phones. I look at um with through House Call Pro how many jobs she scheduled and who paid and who didn't and all that good stuff. I don't have to go in the office and sit in there for another two hours and figure out everything to add to the schedule and all that makes this, makes me a miserable veteran carpet cleaner. No, no. See, this is what I'm saying. And you guys are telling me, or you're saying that I use old strategies and old this. No, I use strategies that work. I'm gonna give you this now. DeAndre Winston, the representative for Soap Daddy um, Cleaning Agents, him and I are talking right now about starting my new five around program. Now, normally you say, Roger, there's nothing new about the five arounds. Let me finish before you're so arrogant and you blow the whole point that could really help you get some good clients. If you're in a decent neighborhood, and you do five arounds, normally you put a door hanger of some sort on the two houses on either side of the house you clean and the three houses across the street. Well, we all know that that's hit or miss because you're not really giving them something unless they know the neighbor or they're interested in cleaning something and then they'll call you. So it's still a, a luck of the draw. But let's push it. We don't have money to waste on door hangers if they're not going to work. We just don't have money for that. So what do we do? We get a six ounce, just a little one, a six ounce bottle of spotter. We put them in a door hanger baggie and we put a little card in there that says, we just cleaned your neighbor's carpets, tile and grout furniture, whatever they had clean. We would like the opportunity to be in your home so when you're ready to use us, you have already used us. Please accept this little bottle, bottle of spot remover to get out 
any annoying things that you might have to deal with or might come. And then when you can get them out, please call this number and then you can hire us and we'll come take care of it for you. Thank you. Right there, stop, stop the press right there. The law of reciprocity is already kicking in with the fact that now you're in those people's homes that you haven't even met. See, this is what I'm saying. And these guys and these other groups are saying that my stuff or my ideas or my visions don't work. Well, by all means, nobody's telling you you have to use them. This is an exclusive from Roger Lloyd. This is breaking news for the carpet cleaning revolution. That's right. 2020 is official. The revolution already started in 2017. I told you that. But in, in 2020, we're taking it to all new heights. Anyone that wants to be financially successful, I'm not saying you can't be successful. I'm talking about financially and mentally successful in a one truck operation. You can't be an operator. You got to let that go. Stop telling people right now if you're taking this concept of what I'm saying to you and stop telling people you're an operator because you're not, because you're not alone. No man is his own island. Oh, I know. I'm a boomer. I'm an old guy. That's an old saying. You guys probably don't like that. But you know what? It's true. It's true. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, so many carpet cleaners are struggling. No, they're not going to tell you. But, you know, all these so-called guys that, um, you know, have so much to say and they're so negative and they tell you that the old stuff doesn't work. What I do is I actually go to their personal page. That's right. I go to their personal page. And I look, scroll through, and I look at their photos, and I look at the pictures that they're in. I look how they, they, their facial expressions are. And let me tell you that a lot of them are so sad, so depressed, even when they're smiling, it's so sad because they look sad. They're not happy. They're not loving it, what they do. Let me tell you something. If you can charge 37 cents 55 cents and 65 cents a square foot and your helper still gets a tip after that, you have exceeded all their expectations. See, you have to stop looking at marketing the way you do. Oh, and wait a minute. For you guys that, <laughs> I have to laugh sometimes. For you guys that hear these guys say, oh, I make such and such, and I do zero marketing. Let me tell you what zero marketing means. That means when they step out their house, when they step out their truck, they don't even tell anyone that they clean carpet. They tell zero amount of people what they do, and people just magically appear. They just magically call them. No, ladies and gentlemen, please read through all the BS. When someone says that they're not marketing and they tell someone, oh, here's my business card. Give me a call if you need your carpets clean. Stop right there. Stop all the presses. They just marketed. They just did marketing. I'm sorry to tell you, they just did what they said they did not do. If they go in any businesses and try to talk to anyone and say, yeah, I wanted to know if you wanted me to give you an estimate to get your carpets clean. Ouch. Again, they just marketed. They just sold their self. They just tried to get business. Because not marketing at all means people just walk up to you and be like, I want you to clean my carpets. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please. Take this exclusive, take this information and understand that the carpet cleaning industry, if I have anything to do with it and with the help of guys like Mikey P, the real guys that understand, and yes, a lot of them are older. How do you think we got to be here? 
Mikey has a ton of equipment and a ton of trucks. He showed you last night the type of money he's making in the broadcast I did, podcast I did with him. You see all the equipment that I have. How do you think we got these things if we don't know nothing? Oh, I know. We just go to all the conventions. We go to experience. We just go into all these carpet supply stores and we just say, you know what? I don't do any marketing. I'm not trying to grow my business, but I just want all that. Just wrap it up and put it in my truck. I just want all that. No, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't work like that. When you charge quality prices, when you charge by the square foot, you better have a special helper that is, is very technical and detailed to go in and clean and think about the customer's needs, not his needs, not trying to get the job done quickly, but the customer's needs. Listen, you don't have to listen to me, but see, I can read through you. I can see what you, you know, you're lying to yourself because you're not lying to me. You might be lying to some of these other guys. See, it's one thing to just be successful. It's another thing to be financially and mentally successful. You want to be able to leave your job or get off your truck at five or six o'clock like everybody else and say, all right, y'all, I'll take it, y'all take it easy. I'll see you tomorrow. You don't want to have to go in and do all the bookkeeping and all that till and for another hour or two. That's not the way you run a successful business that's going to grow, whether it's a one or multi-truck operation, not operator, operation. So I'm going to leave you with this. If you want to start or run a multi-truck operation, please listen and give Johnny Johnson your real ear, not your bull crap ear, not your side ear, your real ear. And then maybe give him a call. If you want to run a single truck operation, maybe you want to loan me a ear. Maybe you don't. Because, see, I'm going to tell you and I'm going to explain to you how you want to get in people's homes. You have to. I know I'm not supposed to say that because there's other methods and people are happy with. But listen, ladies and gentlemen. This is not old school. This is real school because that's why when I talk to a lot of these guys, they might say, oh, I make the same money as Roger Lloyd. Okay, good. How many jobs you do today? I did like eight. Are you kidding me right now? How many did you do? I did two. See, it's not, you're not supposed to kill yourself. And the thing about it is the two people that I did, they're already on my maintenance plan or they're already scheduled in for another six months or so. And then this is the worst part that's really gonna hurt you. People that want and buy quality never have the dirtiest carpets. Yes, I have the Rotovax. Yes, I have the T-Rex by Mighty. Do I really have to, have to, have to use them for these jobs that I clean for? No. That's why a lot of them, a lot of you guys look at my equipment and you'd be like, well, do you ever use it? Of course we do. When these people buy my 65 cents a square foot package, we offer them a roto scrub or they just want a deep scrub. And they say, oh, we want a roto scrub. See, when you charge these prices at 55 cents and 65 cents a square foot for your top packages and carpet cleaning, you have to warrant it. That's why a lot of you guys can't understand when you be like, oh, you guys are ripping people off. How are we ripping people off when we spent $2,499 for these machines to just let them sit and waste away? No, someone has to pay for it. The people that want quality have to see equipment that you, you right there that's looking at me right now, is not going to bring in their home. now. For all you arrogant sons of guns, I'm not saying that you can't clean the carpet with the equipment that you have. See, this is where a little bit of sales comes in with all your carpet cleaning knowledge. 
for a single truck operation. I'm going to keep spent telling you, you have to pick the model that you want to follow. Antoine Evans, Johnny Johnson, they are multi-truck operations. They need to have a price point, $35, $40, $30. Those are price points that will keep their phones ringing and keep their technicians working. Just like you have McDonald's, you have Red Lobster, and then you have those five-star restaurants. Now, you don't say, oh, we should stop eating because McDonald's doesn't do it right. No. You don't say, oh, well, um, Red Lobster and the five-star restaurants, they're way too high. No. You don't say that. You pick the level of comfort and nine times out of 10 who you're taking to eat out. Cause if it's someone that you're dating or you're interested in that five-star restaurant is exactly where you're going to go. Now, if it's your wife and you guys are just on date night or something like that, maybe you'll pick a red lobster. But then if it's just like you and the kids and they like, mommy, I want me Daniels. You like bingo. Let me feed everybody. I know all the hamburgers are not going to be great. I know the fries are going to be too greasy, but you know what? All the kids got a meal. So when you listen to Johnny Johnson, you got to understand the type of people and his clientele. He's getting that money, but he wants to do it, in my opinion, the, the Red Lobster way. He still got a Devastator one. He still got a CRB, but no, he's not giving you shoe booties and there's nothing wrong with that for his model. No, he's not giving you a seal of door and there's nothing wrong with that for his model. Now, somebody like Jason Alexander or Jason, um, Jason Anderson, sorry, JJ, sorry about that, buddy. Somebody like Jason Anderson, somebody like Fred Hayes, well, I would like to sit down and talk to both of them. I think that my strategy and methodology model, so-called, I believe that that would work best for them. I know it would. I know we all listen to Fred Hayes. We all listen to Jason. They all right here in the CCW now. And we like it. We think it's amusing. But are you listening to what they're saying? Their model works because of the way they chose it. Now, Antoine Evans, the Let's Talk About It guy, the ambassador of the carpet cleaning world, Johnny Johnson, who, I mean, I'm probably going to talk to him. He probably will be, him and Jason will probably be moving up the moderator status very soon. We got Billy. Oh, Billy, I'm so sorry, Billy. Now, I'm not sure. I think Billy works with his brother. But now, you're probably saying, oh, Billy's a multi-truck operation. No, Billy still has one truck. He works with his brother. His brother would be considered the helper, and then his wife or whoever he has answering the phones would be considered his phone person. I'm not saying you have to go outsource to make a one-truck operation, because Billy is showing us right then and there that he's doing it all in-house. And it's working. You see the way he sets up and he puts all the mats down and the seal of door and everything, wall buddies. See, that's what I'm talking about. He's giving his people an experience that's wowing them. We're going to use that word, wowing them. So he's running a single truck operation. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever questioned me, if you ever thought or listen to these so-called, I'm not even going to do that, but these other guys that are saying that I'm not worthy of listening to, first of all, everyone has a story. Everyone is worthy of listening to. But maybe their model is not your model. So being as though I've been a single truck operator, I've operated chun, I've been a multi-truck operation. 
I have the authority to speak on how to market for both of them. If you want to be financially successful and mentally successful. The guy that I bought my first truck mount from, I had to go back to uh, him a year later because I think he had like an extra pump. He told me if I ever needed it just to give him a call or a shout. I don't know if you guys heard about this. It was like 20 some years ago. He shot himself in his office. He shot himself. Now you're talking about a guy that did mold remediation. He had multi trucks. Had a nice warehouse office right out there in Hatboro, Pennsylvania. Shot himself. I went out there and his wife was like, oh, he's he's uh, he's no longer with us. I'm like, he's no longer with us. And then I went to the uh, carpet supply store, Interlink, and they told me, oh, yeah, he killed himself. Shot himself in the head. What? This guy was making money. When I bought his truck and everything, I found out later on that he was trying to unload some things, and then he shot himself. Don't be like that. See, that's what I'm saying. If you listen to this, all this negativity that this uh, industry has to offer, it will lead you down the wrong path, and you don't want to do that. Listen, if you want to be your own boss and answer the phones and do everything, it just makes sense to get yourself a nine to five. Just get yourself a nine to five because you're not going to be successful. You're not going to be happy in this industry. Nobody wants to answer the phone while they're trying to clean carpet. Nobody wants to come home at the end of the night and do all the paperwork. And as far as doing the Johnny Johnson or Antoine Evans method of trying to do price points when you're a single truck operator, you're never going to reach your financial potential. And you have to do so much more if you're a one truck operator. They expect it from you or they're not going to call you back. And they are looking, if they called you on a price, they are looking for some type of splash and dash. They still expect it to be a little bit better than Stanley Steamer. That's why they called you. Now, I hope, I sincerely hope, as I let you go and enjoy your Thanksgiving meal, I hope you understand where I stand with the carpet cleaning world revolution. This is a revolution because now, if you understand that number one, you have to pick the type of model of carpet cleaning business you want to run. That's number one. You heard it here first. Number two, you have to pick, once you pick what type of op, um, operation or model, you have to pick what price point you want to be at. You have to pay your technicians. If you're on the lower end, you got to still make money. So you're going to hire guys and pay them between $10 and $12. If you're on the higher end, between $30 or $40 a room, then you got to pay the guys between $12 or $14 an hour. Yes, if you are a single truck operation, you have to find you someone that is detailed and cares about the way they do things. And you have to pay them between 15 to 25% of your profits that you made through square footage. And stop judging people by where they live. It kills me when so many veterans say, oh, well, I only, my type of customer lives on a hill or my type of customer, no, ladies and gentlemen, they're telling you the wrong information again. Because there are people that will hire quality that live in the financially challenged areas. Try it out. I'm telling you. And my next podcast, if you like this one and you're going to run with it, I'll tell you how if you're um, going to be a single truck operator operation, some ways that you can market to get to the people you want to get to. Now, remember, if you're a one truck operation, 
you do want people of value and quality. How do you start by finding them? Well, I'll tell you, you start with the people that hired you. You you give them some referral cards. You uh, market during the five rounds I explained to you. If you are a multi-truck operator, operation, you want to pick your price points. Well, if you want to charge between twenty to thirty dollars, you got to pay your guys between ten to ten to twelve dollars an hour. If you're a um, if you're going to charge between thirty or forty dollars a room, you got to pay the guys between twelve to fourteen dollars an hour, and they have to be trained so well because they're working on the clock. You hear Johnny Johnson all the time say, oh, we had to do three rooms. We were in and out of there in an hour and a half. No problem. We made two hundred. Da, 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 da. We made $160 in an hour and a half's time, in an hour's time. That's good money. Now we're on our way to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Well, you get to the next one, you already made almost um, like $900, like he said. I do the math when he's talking, but that could never be my model because I'm not trying to run two or three trucks like that. It's too much of a hassle for me. But for him, that model makes sense. But for me, for Jason Alexander, um, Anderson, I'm sorry, Fred Hayes, like us single truck guys, like I know Jason Anderson works with his brother. I've seen Fred Hayes take his son with him on jobs. Those are considered helpers, ladies and gentlemen. We just have to make sure they're detailed like we should be. We have to wow our clients. If you're not getting at least two or three written or video reviews per week, if you're a single truck operation, you got to go back to the drawing board. This is Roger Lloyd from the Carpet Cleaning World. This was an exclusive. The revolution is here, ladies and gentlemen. Why not be a part of it? Understand this industry. Understand the models and not understand the fools that just want to down everyone else in this industry because they make the perfect line strokes. Ask them what model do they have. Ask them what system, what's their price point. If they can't give you any of that information, you need to really check yourself and ask you, is this the person that I really want to listen to? Thank you and happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family with good old Roger Lloyd here. I'll see you Friday night on Friday Night Insights. You wait up um, tonight, you have Antoine Evans doing Let's Talk About It because Thursday, tomorrow, of course, is Thanksgiving. So he's going to do it tonight. Let's talk about it. Enjoy Antoine Evans tonight. Have a good night, everyone.